How good is Mercy in Season 9? Hey there, my name's Deandra and I placed Masters 3 with basically just Mercy plus the occasional Zenyatta. <laughs> I'm aiming to make my way back up to GM at the moment and just wanted to do a quick video talking about how I'm feeling. So in summary, Mercy is kind of bad. You can still make her work if you really want to, especially if the enemy is not running dive or you have a good DPS to anchor to, but generally anything she provides, someone else does it better. I'm gonna split this video into a few categories and start with healing. I think Mercy is struggling for a couple of reasons right now. Partially, it's just that the current meta doesn't favor her. Secondly, Mercy's healing output feels a bit wonky even though that's not been her primary job for a long time now. I actually don't dislike the DPS passive as a mechanic, in fact I'm really enjoying Season 9 overall, but I also think it might need some tweaks. The lack of indication that the passive is active is by far my biggest complaint because I'm trying to play around it, but it's a bit difficult sometimes. As Mercy, I'm often looking all over the place so it's easy to miss a pallet of damage. I keep looking out for obvious indicators that it's active for my team at least. So for example, if I see enemies in my Sojourn snare and allies attacking them, I will try to push damage boost. Same with the MP or Ash's dynamites, you know, stuff that can't really be missed. I have heard some people say that the passive should require a minimum amount of damage to trigger it, so a single shot pellet from across the map can't activate it, or that it should affect tanks less, both of which I think are pretty fair ideas. Whenever Mercy's healing feels bad though, that's generally a good indicator that you should really be pushing damage boost as much as you can. I've seen some posts online from people who feel like Mercy is boring to play right now because they're forced to heal bot all of the time, but the thing is, there's chance that heal botting as Mercy is not going to save your allies anyway. Your output isn't always good enough, which is isn't even necessarily the fault of the player. Because of the DPS passive, the game is now more about winning fights faster with utility and damage, rather than there being a huge amount of sustained healing that can correct the majority of positioning mistakes, aka someone just standing out in the open all game. If your brain is not switched on and constantly assessing your surroundings, it is extremely easy to fall into an endless healing loop you cannot escape from. But keep in mind, the blue beam can help stop the source of damage entirely. If I can afford to, I like to push small flicks of damage boost when I do get bogged down by healing. Now, the problem with everything I've just said is that your tank and DPS aren't always going to be understanding of this, especially in the metal ranks. Adapting to Season 9 is going to take a while for the average player, which might be kind of painful in places. One small observation is how crucial it is to peel for your other support when possible, especially since the meta is divey and aggressive. A fight is going to be so much harder to win with just Mercy's healing if your other support drops before you secure a numbers advantage. Also in the past, I've talked about being considerate of your other support's ult charge when making plays. Basically, you would intentionally leave healing for your other support so they could build ult while you've damage boosted or whatever. Now, I've not completely abandoned this line of thinking, but I find myself much, much more selfish, including the cleanup after one fights. Damage boost gives less ult charge than it used to, ultimates globally cost 10% more, and the amount you heal is constantly ping-ponging with how often the DPS is applying and wearing off. This all just accumulates into Valkyrie being a bit slow to get sometimes, but having ult ready is such a good safety net. The sympathetic recovery buffs mean your survivability in Valkyrie is really good, providing that you position smartly, which can feel so nice against certain heroes. A good tracer can easily control the match, especially the players that were GM1 last season, so playing outside of her effective range for 15 seconds does you wonders. Plus, mass damage boost is just extremely good, especially if you can get allies to focus the same target that's been affected by the DPS passive. As for good damage boost targets, you can never go wrong with the long range hit scans, especially when they enable you to play from safer positions. I know a lot of players went into Season 9 afraid that Hanzo was going to be super busted with the Mercy Pocket, and to be fair, it is is pretty good. Definitely keep an eye out for Storm Arrows by the way, but generally I still find myself prioritizing a good Sojourn over him since she feels more consistent. Although I might make an exception if he's like super cracked or something. I also want to give a special shout out to Tracer because she's just so strong at the moment overall. I'm not going to put myself in danger to do so, especially with the hitbox changes, but if I can beam Tracer when we initiate, or if everyone is playing close together on the objective, I'll try to boost her when I can. Same with my Wrecking Ball if I see him going for ground pounds, or if I can just kind of tell that he's capitalizing off the DPS passive. Next, let's talk about Mercy's Season 9 changes real quick. So, us content creators, we did not get
get to play much of the patch in advance. It was like one or two games max, if that. When Season 9 went live, none of us had any actual idea about how things were gonna play out. With the Guardian Angel buff, okay look, I'll take whatever I can get, right? Any GA buff is a win in my book, however honestly at first I couldn't even really notice it and I think a few people felt this way. I saw some Discord messages that were like, is it bugged? Are the buffs even in yet? But given some time, I do think it is pretty nice, especially in a dive heavy environment. It's not like you can suddenly be sloppy with Guardian Angel, and I think some of the shorter ones still feel pretty janky, but if I'm being chased, it's easier to briefly dip behind cover, wait for GA, then reposition. As for the sympathetic recovery buffs, those do actually feel really, really nice. As I sorta of said earlier, it's mainly beneficial during Valkyrie. And last of all, let's talk about the very controversial hitbox sizes. We did see Mercy's Blaster get nerfed in the hotfix patch. Now, I've never been a big fan of going into the practice range and being like, hey, look how easy it is to take down a stationary target that's not an accurate representation of how an actual match works. But that being said, her bullets have always been slightly silly. I personally don't mind these being taken down a notch, even if the rest of her kit is not great right now. Plus, it was just a smaller hotfix patch, so if any Mercy changes are planned, the mid-season patch would be more likely. Anyway, as for the hitbox sizes in general, be careful about using small or thin pieces of terrain like this, because occasionally you will get hit when you think you should be behind cover. Obviously Mercy should not be spending too much time on the payload, but keep in mind it is now a lot worse for protection than it used to be. I'm also much more wary about potential splash damage. Not only will enemies be hitting more shots while you GA to cover, things like Soldier's Helix Rockets will also apply the passive and make it harder for your other support to help you out. Overall, the hitbox changes just mean being more cautious about your positioning. I am fairly mediocre to occasionally just above average when it comes to aiming, and even I find hitting a Mercy that's super jumping in the middle of a fight pretty manageable now. When I approach an enemy to start pistoling them, I'm much more careful to either use cover while I close the distance or slingshot over with GA. I have seen advice from players in the past about how the enemy should never see you as mercy, which I think has a lot of merit but isn't something I would 100% agree with. I just sort of feel you can sometimes deny yourself information, like where an enemy is positioned or what state they're in. For example, if I notice an enemy in my backline with no cooldowns, I'll try to call it out so we can go hand with damage boost. Anyway, I think that piece of advice about not being seen is more relevant to this season than it ever has before, especially against tracers or soldiers or widow makers. And that is all from me. Like I said, I just wanted to do a quick discussion video. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.